Hey everybody, Dr. Nelson here. Uh, this is a video on how to solve equations with fractions, okay? So before we actually get into solving the equations, I, was, I just want to do a little quick review on how to multiply and add fractions. I know it's been a long time since you've done this, so this is just a refresher, all right? So the first one, we have one-fourth times three-fifths. And remember, multiplying fractions is the easiest of all the operations. All you do is you multiply the, the enumerators, so it's going to be 1 times 3, and you put it over the product of the denominators. So 4 times 5. So 1 times 3 is 3, and 4 times 5 is 20. So it equals 3 twentieths. All right? One rule um, in this problem, what you're allowed to do is you're allowed to cross reduce. So if you look at the 2 and the 4, okay, if we had a fraction 2 fourths, we could reduce that down to 1 half, right? So I'm gonna make this a one and make this a two. And I can't reduce this way, the one and the three. So now we just multiply the numerators. One times one is one. And three times two is six. This one we have a mixed number, right? So we need to make it improper. So one and a half can be written as three halves. And just a reminder, the way you do that is you do the denominator times the whole number. So 2 times 1 is 2, and then you add the 1, right? And you put it all over the denominator. So it's going to be 3 halves times 1 fourth. And let's see, I can't cross reduce it all. So 3 times 1 is 3, and 2 times 4 is 8. All right? So remember, when you multiply fractions, when in doubt, just multiply the numerators, and then multiply the denominators, and make a fraction with those products. All right? Now, adding fractions is a little bit more tricky because remember, we need to have common denominators. All right, so write down uh, CD for common denominators. So here we have one fourth plus two thirds. So we need to rename these with common denominators. So the least common multiple of four and three is 12. So our new denominator is gonna be 12. And remember, the rule is you say four times what? gives me 12, and that's gonna be three. And what you do to the bottom, you have to do to the top. So I'm gonna multiply the one times the three, and that's gonna be three twelfths. Now here, three times four gives you 12, right? So I gotta multiply the two times the four, and that's gonna be eight, all right? So now we have three twelfths and uh, plus eight twelfths, which adds up to 11 twelfths. Because once you have common denominators, then you just add the numerators. All right, take a look at this problem here. Here we have one and one third plus two and two fifths. So there's different ways of doing this. You could just add, a, add the whole numbers first. So one and two gives you three and then add the fractions. So one third plus two fifths. I'm gonna rename with common denominators of 15. So three times five gives you 15, right? So one times five is five, and five times three gives you 15, so two times three is six. Now I'm gonna add these together, and five fifteenths uh, plus six fifteenths gives you 11 fifteenths. So it's three and 11 fifteenths. Another method would have been to make these improper fractions. So this would have been, uh, let me use a different color here. This would have been four thirds, plus this one would have been 12 fifths, and then it's really the same process as the problem up, up here where you just rename them with common denominators and regardless you get the same answer of 3 and 11 fifteenths. All right, if you turn the page, let's now try to actually solve problems um, involving fractions. All right, so here we have 1 half times 4n plus 6 equals 25. And by now you should know that this is the distributive property you have to use it, right? So we have to do 1 half times 4n and also 1 half times 6. So 1 half times 4n, that's going to give us 2n, plus 1 half times 6 is going to be 3, and that's going to equal 25, and then take away 3 from both sides, right, get rid of the constant. So now we have 2n equals 22, and then divide both sides by 2, and n equals 11. All right. 
I want to backtrack real quick and just go over the one half times four n. Remember, when you multiply fractions, you multiply across, right? So uh, that's a one. Excuse me. So one times four n is four n, and two times one is two, and four divided by two. That's how we get this two n right here. All right. Let's try this one. We have one third n plus one half n equals fifty. So before before we solve, we have to add one third n plus one half n. So I'm going to rename these with common denominators of six. So this is going to be let's see times two, right? So one times two is two six times three. So times three, that's going to be three six. So two six plus three six gives us five six n equals fifty. Now remember, this means five six times n. So the opposite of timesing is dividing. And when you divide fractions, remember you multiply by the reciprocal. So the reciprocal of five six is going to be six fifths. So we're going to multiply both sides by six fifths. And when we do this, these sixes cancel out and these five cancel out. So it's just going to be n equals, and I can write the 50 as 50 over one. So 50 and five, let's see, that can be reduced down to 10 and one. And now we multiply 10 times six gives you 60. So n equals 60. All right, if you turn the page, let's try problems that look a little bit different here, okay? Here we have a number plus eight divided by three equals 12. All right, anytime you have a fraction problem, okay, you always wanna get rid of the denominator first. So this means a number plus eight divided by three. So the opposite of dividing by three is multiplying by three. So when I do that, these are gonna cancel out. Now we're gonna have a number plus eight equals 36. And now just take away eight from both sides. And N is gonna equal 28. There's your solution, okay? So again, anytime you have a fraction, right? Get rid of the denominator first, okay? That's going to apply to this problem over here as well because we have 3 times a number minus 5 divided by 4 equals negative 3. So step 1, we're going to multiply both sides by 4. So that makes these 4's cancel out. So now we have 3 times a number minus 5 equals negative 12. And now I need to distribute the 3 to the n and the negative 5. So it's gonna be 3n minus 15 equals negative 12. And now it's just a matter of solving for uh, n. So I'm gonna add 15 to both sides, add 15. So we have 3n equals, let's see, negative 12 plus positive 15 uh, gives us three. And then last but not least, divide both sides by three, and we get n equals one. All right. Now these trick these problems are a little bit tricky. All right, so you gotta make some mistakes, which is fine. Um, so why don't you pause the uh, the video and try the your turn now problems, and then when you're done, I hit play. And you can see how you did. All right, good luck. All right, welcome back. Let's see how you did with these practice problems. These are a little bit tricky, okay? So the first one, we have one third times 12n minus nine equals 37. So we have to use the distributive property here. So we need to multiply one third times 12n, okay? So one third times 12n, uh, that would be 12n over three, which would reduce down to four n. And now we have to do one third times negative nine which would give us, let's see, negative nine over three, which is gonna be minus three equals 37. And now we need to add both sides, uh, add three to both sides. So we get four N equals 40, divide both sides by four, and we get N equals 10. And there's our solution. All right, last but not least, let's try this problem over here. Here we have one third times a number, equals one half 
plus two fifths. So again, I need to simplify the right hand expression. So we need to rename these with common denominators. So our least common multiple of two and five are 10. So we know that one half of 10 is a uh, five, right? And let's see, five times two gives you 10. So two times two is four. So five tenths plus four tenths gives us nine tenths. So I can rewrite this as one third n equals nine tenths. This means one third times n, so the opposite of timesing is dividing. So which means we have to multiply both sides by the reciprocal, right? Which is three over one. And when I do that, these threes cancel out and we get n equals, remember we multiply fractions, you multiply across, right? So nine times three is 27. 10 times one is 10. So our answer can be 27 tenths, or we could go two and seven tenths. And there's our answer. All right, how'd you do?